Oscars or no Oscars. India has always had many exceptionally talented artists. But wow, today India is shining at the Oscars. Let's dance. Wow, what an achievement. That's enough. Now wake up and ask yourself, how many Oscars have Indian won so far? Less than 10, right? Is it reflective of India's talent? So do you see this football pitch? Do you see its two ends? That is the elevated side with all the advantages. And that is the other side. And it seems clear that this is where Indians usually compete from. They go against the tide. They even go against the system. And yes, many times, against all odds on the global stage, they still manage to win. And yes, it seems that's how Indians have won Oscars in the world of corrupt, racist and agenda-driven Western award ceremonies. But before I tell you how rotten and corrupt the Western award bodies and Hollywood are and how the world reacted to India's success, let us appreciate how non-Hindi cinema is representing India internationally and how it solidifies India's diverse character on the global stage. Now take a look at this. Even India's PM referred to the awards as a prestigious honor and tweeted that India is elated and proud. Many other leaders and public personalities from India also joined the celebration. The winners from India and their work became even more popular as the Western media, Chinese media and others wrote numerous articles about them. But as expected, some white supremacists and racists felt that it was unfair that Indians won the awards and some in India's neighborhood even foolishly accused Indians of cheating. But coming back to an important point, are the Academy Awards and Hollywood genuine mediums to express or celebrate one's artistic freedom or are they in many ways fooling the innocent public and are a source of xenophobia? Regarding the Academy Awards, consider this. An investigation published in 2016 mentioned that only 6.4% of acting nominations since the awards began in 1929 have gone to non-white actors. Just take a look at this. Here, white. And here is non-white. But the underrepresentation or discrimination and hatred against minorities and non-whites in the Western entertainment industries and of course in Hollywood has a well-established pattern. Besides that, there is also a sophisticated and cunning Christian machinery that has successfully and deceitfully worked on the Christianization of Hollywood. For instance, consider this. Movie Guide Awards have a clear mission. Read this. According to biblical principles, influencing industry executives and artists. They advise major movie studios in Hollywood on how their movies can become more Christian-friendly and see what they openly declare on their website. Christian content has more than quadrupled in movies thanks to their efforts and still many movie lovers across the world innocently believe that Hollywood and their artists are all about artistic freedom and freedom of expression. Many Hollywood artists and other entertainers are directly influenced by a corrupt or agenda-driven system that adulterates artistic expression and manipulates the innocent audience. Hence, there is no surprise that patterns of xenophobia and anti-Semitism have a long history in Hollywood. Can we forget the American film The Birth of a Nation, which has been described as the most racist movie ever made, but of course it was a super hit in the USA and was even screened at the White House and watched by the then American president who was a racist. The American film was so terrible that it was even compared to the Nazi propaganda film Triumph of the Will, but of course, in a country full of racists, it was a blockbuster. Not only that, a series of Hollywood and British films were produced justifying British colonialism in India while negatively stereotyping or vilifying India. But it is not just about the colonial attitude, racism or the ongoing Christian attempts that suppress Hollywood's artistic freedom. The arrival of the Chinese Communist Party's influence in Hollywood has also shaped what global audiences see. Remember, it is not just about the white actors dominating the Oscars, as whiteness also dominates when it comes to Oscar voters. Published in 2012, this study mentioned that Oscar voters are nearly 94% Caucasian and 77% male. It was also found that some of the Academy's 15 branches are almost exclusively white and male. Also, citing a poll, this article on Reader's Digest mentioned that the people who decide best picture don't necessarily watch the movies before they vote. Wow, they don't even watch the movies before they vote. 
But that's not everything. It was also observed that the Oscars have increasingly come to resemble political campaigns with conflicts of interest as lavish parties are organized to benefit or impress Academy voters. Not only that, in some categories, such as costume design and makeup, almost nobody makes an objective assessment. They either vote for their friends or go for a film they happen to like for other reasons. Seriously? Voting for their friends? And read this. Academy members will often vote in the categories on which they have strong feelings, then let their children or their friends fill out the rest. I'm sorry, but the Oscar system seems totally broken here. I should also mention that in recent times, after getting exposed and criticized, those who are running the Oscars have taken some steps to save face and have tried to come up with some reforms. As a result, there has been a mild improvement, but with such a long and well-established pattern of xenophobia, racism and misogyny in the Western world, the future for non-whites and women still seems difficult. But how can an outsider challenge a broken system? One way could be to reject something that is evil. How about rejecting Oscars? There have been cases when people have rejected them. Will we also see an Indian rejecting an Oscar in the future? But how can we stop Indians from getting manipulated? Remember, you watch them, that's what strengthens them, and that also funds them. See how the academy behind the Oscars makes money. Don't forget, the broadcast deals are a major source of their income. The West, with all its racism, colonial attitude and xenophobia, has failed to deliver. The bitter truth is that it's the defeat and the misfortune of the genuine free world that the colonial criminal state's institutions, which have a xenophobic track record, are still dominating and are shaping our opinions. As a responsible nation with multiple film industries and more than a billion people, India needs to rise to the occasion. But can Indians successfully come up with a truly democratic and a truly inclusive body to award artists and entertainers at a global stage, which is more popular and desirable than the Oscars? See you again!